Welcome to Revolutionary Health, the show that focuses on Black gay men's health and wellness. I'm your host, Michael Ward, back here for another edition. Make sure that you like, subscribe, follow us on all our social media, Facebook and Instagram at The Counter Narrative. On Twitter, we're at Building Desire. So leave your comments below. Make sure you tell a friend to tell a friend, all that wonderful good stuff. This week, I've got the OG coming back here with us, Dr. David Mel Branch, hey, back hey. again for another edition. And this week, we're going to be talking about the news that came out about the um, injectable prep study. So we figured no better person to talk to than you about this. So I just want to check in with you. How are you doing? How are you feeling before we get started talking about everything? Yeah, I'm feeling okay now. I actually just got off a, uh, last night, a virtual birthday party for a dear friend uh, where we had like 30 people on a Zoom call. And it was absolutely amazing. He talked very candidly about his mental health uh, during this whole COVID-19 pandemic. And um, everybody kind of chimed in about that. And then we sang him happy birthday and we just kind of held each other tight and connected. And it was really, 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 really nice. I know he was a little bit anxious and bothered because we've all had a lot of deaths and people getting sick and things happening right. with this pandemic. But I think it was a moment that I really cherished because it was nice to do what we could at that time for him on his birthday. He's usually somebody that like travels and goes places and has gatherings and stuff. So I know this was really killing him. So it was yeah. nice to have that. So I'm in a better mood today. Good. I'm definitely glad to hear. Since the community, it's just changed everything that we have to do, even birthday parties mm -hmm. with that. So I'm glad you're in good spirits and you're here with us to talk about the study that came out about injectable prep. So I would just let you start off with the basics of the basics to break it down, everything that we know before I start asking all the questions that I've got for you. Yeah, I think um, people just need to know that this was a study conducted by the HIV Prevention Trials Network, otherwise known as HPTN. And this one's um, number was 083. They have different uh, study numbers for each of their clinical trials. And it was a randomized uh, clinical trial that actually looked at probably about 4,600, about 4,600 men who have sex with men and transgendered women and randomized them into two clinical arms. Um, half of them got an injectable HIV prevention medication called cabotegravir, which is an integrase inhibitor, very similar to like dolutegravir or bictegravir, which is in Bictarvi, and dolutegravir is in uh, Triumec and also Dovato. And so this works at, at, by inhibiting an enzyme at that same cycle of HIV trying to reproduce itself. Um, and that arm was compared to another arm who got Truvada, which is what people are usually using or most people seem to be on for PrEP nowadays. And it's been available since 2012. Um, the one question I had, they had a press release that was a couple days ago and basically said that uh, the clinical term that they use in scientific language is that it was non-inferior, meaning that it worked just as well as preventing HIV than Truvada did. And actually, when you look at the details of the study, it was about 69% more effective in preventing HIV than Truvada was. And the important thing for that is that um, Truvada is a once daily pill, whereas cabotegravir is injectable and injected every eight weeks or once every two months. So it cuts the HIV prevention medication down from something you have to take every day to a visit that you only have to have six times a year. Um, and so I think the, the incidence rate or how many new infections they had was only uh, 0.038 for the cabotegravir arm and 1.21 for the uh, Truvada arm. And basically what it meant was that it was just as effective, if not better at reducing uh, the likelihood of someone contracting HIV who was um, negative. And the important thing about it, I mentioned that it was 4,600 uh, participants. There are several key factors with this. They had locations in Africa, they had locations in Asia, they had locations in the United States, and they had locations in South America. So it was a global study with people from all over. Um, the really important thing about this study, which I think is absolutely phenomenal, is that 12% of the population of participants overall were transgender women. And then also 50% of all participants were black, which is finally for probably the first time we've seen in a lot of these clinical trials, 
the participant population actually represents the burden of HIV in this case. So black people, we make up maybe 14% of the US population, but account for about half of the new HIV cases. But usually in these clinical trials, it's about 80% white and maybe eight to 10 or 12% black. So this was a really, really well-designed study and very encouraging in mm -hmm. that, um, you know, we can have a new prevention option that'll actually help for this. So this is wonderful. Awesome. Yeah, because I was definitely um, looking at some of the statistics and everything. And that was, I think, the most transgender women that they've ever had before in a study um, or something along those lines. I leave it to the, the people like you there in public health to know about that. But I, I think for the people that are not taking or who don't want to take PrEP every day, because that's what 365 days a year, that this will definitely cut it down. And one of the benefits that they were saying about that, too, is that people who want to be more discreet about it or who don't necessarily adhere to medication for whatever reasons, mental health, compliance, adherence, all of these things that will make it better. I, one of the questions I wonder as well, too, because the CDC does recommend still condom usage with PrEP. If this in, if injectable prep passes, is that something that they were still studying? Is it going to be injectable with condom usage or in this study? Did they kind of talk about that as well? Well, the message is always going to be um, one of prep as a program. So pre-exposure prophylaxis, we shouldn't just say, oh, it's just about a blue pill, because mm -hmm. what's happening is that we're seeing several different ways that you can get pre-exposure prophylaxis. So they always have said in the CDC, I, I agree, or the FDA will say at one point when this is FDA approved, that this is in combination with condom use. Um, and so they still will encourage condom use with that just to prevent other STIs, because obviously this is a medication that blocks HIV and it doesn't block other STIs like herpes, syphilis, gonorrhea, chlamydia, all of those. So we have to be very careful with that. And one of the other things that I forgot to mention while you were talking uh, came to my mind is that they did note that the Truvada arm, the people who were in the study that took Truvada actually had good adherence. I believe it was up to close to 80% that were adhering, taking it every day. So it's not something where you may be able to say, well, maybe they weren't taking it as much, so their drug levels weren't as high, and that's why it didn't work as well as the injectable. And of course, I think we'll get more information. This um, press release was simply that. It was a press release and kind of a snapshot with a certain amount of information about the study and what the, um, they usually have a drug safety monitoring board, which is a group of uh, clinicians and scientists that kind of make sure it's safe, make sure the mm -hmm. medications are safe, make sure the study is not uh, causing any harm to participants. And they basically said at one point, they opened the study up to say, okay, look, um, for the people who are on Truvada, you could actually switch to the injectable cabotegravir if you wanted to at that point. So that's where we're at right now. And I think more details about the study will be coming along probably at, a, at an upcoming conference pretty soon. So we'll hear from information, but obviously it's very encouraging because right. people that hate taking pills every day <laughs> and don't mind getting a shot, this is something that could be a good answer, a good option for them. Right. Uh, one of the other questions too that I had that I'd I read about it that made me kind of think about this as far as how long that is staying, I guess, in your in your body, because you take it, you said every eight weeks, about every two months compared to it. Are they able to monitor like how much is staying in your body at one time? If it's still going to like those are the things that I'm curious about as far as with it. Yeah, they've done all those studies beforehand without getting too detailed in kind of the scientific and public health speak. But they usually look at what kind of maximum concentration, either an antibiotic or in this case, an antiviral, uh, antiretroviral therapy stays in the bloodstream. They look at half-lives, how long it takes for half of the drug to be cleared out of your system. And so those, those calculations have already been done in previous studies. This was to see whether it was acceptable and whether it was actually efficacious in reducing the risk of HIV transmission um, in this population. And so those things have been met. So obviously, it stays in your system in this injectable form for a good two months. And they've already done the studies to kind of calculate that out. So at, at this point, it's just about seeing whether it actually works. And from this preliminary data, it seems that it does. I got you. What about side effects? I think that's the thing that I always hear about people wanting to start prep and get on prep and taking pills every day that is hard on your body. You have all of these things. But my understanding as well is that, of course, you get testing beforehand with SCIs and then you get liver tests and functioning kidneys, all of those kind of things too. 
Um, are there any side effects or anything that they, because I didn't see any from what I read, but um, any anything that people, probably as more details come out that they should know about side effects? Yeah, the main the main side effect that they reported, I think in about 80% of the participants in the cabotegravir arm uh, was injection site reaction, so some kind of soreness. But I think only one to 2% discontinued the medication or, or dropped out of the trial because of that side effect. So it may be something that's just tolerable that you're sore for a little bit, almost similar to the, the pain you get, the injection site reaction you get with a vaccine or something like that. And then people can move on and, and do everything. I think it's going to be really curious to see what people do and kind of how this all plays out. Because what's interesting is that if I can make a quick plug for Johnny Cornegay's video on getting the mail in prep, I think that video was absolutely phenomenal in like showing kind of the process of getting something by the mail, the testing you need to go through and then go from there. And that is kind of the whole process of prep because he didn't really focus on the pills. He focused on the whole process of what you do with this. And what's going to be interesting with cabotegravir when it gets FDA approved for use and when physicians can prescribe it to people, whether people will be okay with going in to get this injection every two months, will there be home visits so someone can come to you? Can people be self-taught to actually give the injection to themselves a la testosterone or insulin. estrogen injection or insulin or things like that. So I think it's going to be interesting moving forward to see how people do. And then if you do have to go into a clinic, are we now going to rec recommend that people get STI testing every two months when you're going in to get the injection? Or can people kind of skip that, um, do the injection, and then maybe go in every four months, like three times a year, to get the STI testing and make sure everything is okay? So I think some more details and some more nuances have to kind of pan out with this. But I think the, the big picture is that it's just a very exciting time because mm -hmm. instead of just having Truvada and Descovi as these two pills, um, that are preventing HIV as part of a PrEP program. Now you have the, an injectable version. And people are studying things where PrEP in the future is going to have transdermal approaches where you can put a patch on, where you can kind of um, have an implantable device similar to Norplant uh, with contraception for women. You can do that. And then also you're going to have topical microbicides and other kinds of things that can kill viruses and bacteria that people can you know, apply to the anus, apply to the vagina, and it'll work just as well. So I think this is starting to kind of expand our repertoire and our, expand what we always mm -hmm. call the toolbox of mm -hmm. what people can use. And so instead of it, oh my God, I just have to take this pill. Now you can have a conversation with your provider and say, okay, look, I don't like shots, so I'm gonna go with the pill. Or I'm worried about potential kidney and bone effects with Truvada, so I'm gonna do Descovi. Or the people that look at Descovi because there's potential side effects of high cholesterol and weight gain. You know what? I don't want that Descovi, so I'm going to try the cabotegravir because I don't mind the shots. It's going to give more options uh, for people to take better control of their sexual health, which I think at the end of the day is what this is all about. Absolutely. I think it's exciting. I think it is exciting times, especially people get to choose um, how to protect themselves and advocate for their sexual wellness. And thank you for the plug with Johnny as well. So if you all haven't watched it, definitely go and watch Johnny's video by getting prep in the mail to give you another option as well to take care of your sexual health. Um, the study with uh, women as well, that's still ongoing. That results of that hasn't come out either. Yeah, I was just about to say one of the things that we've seen in the, the previous studies, the IPREX study, the Partners Prep study with Truvada, and then what was called the DISCOVER trial that compared Truvada with the newer version of PrEP, which is Discovi, is that um, they really excluded transgender women and cisgendered women. And so what Vive did very brilliantly, and a, very, a, a shout out to Dr. Kimberly Smith, um, who's one of the head honchos over at Vive, the pharmaceutical company that makes cabotegravir, they had these uh, kind of dual studies going on at the same time. So while HPTN 084 was focused on men who have sex with men and transgendered women, HPTN 083 was actually focused on cisgendered women. And most of the, the study sites and the women that they're uh, doing the study with the participants are in Africa. Um, 
And so different countries, I think I saw Botswana and Zimbabwe are a few of the locations where that study is taking place. Um, but just for people that are looking at this and saying, okay, here we go, cisgender women are left out of the equation again, just know that they created a separate study, I think with about 3,200 women that will look at the effectiveness and the same arm. So you're going to look at whether they're taking Truvada and whether they're taking Cabotegravir, follow them along and see how effective they both are in preventing HIV. So for the women out there, that are worried about being neglected, it's coming. So be patient. I think the results, some uh, initial press release probably be within the next few months before the end of the year. Awesome, awesome news. As it says in the press release, as we get closer to the goal in 2030 of ending the epidemic, I think this is promising news and good stuff as well, especially for black gay men to have options to choose and advocate for themselves on their sexual health. So thank you so much for, for giving us the breakdown. You always do it so well for mm-hmm. the people like me that just kids need the basics of the basics of the basics of everything. You got so it before, all. <laughs> so before we get out of here, anything else that we need to know, anything else that we should be looking out for or need to access the information that we need? No, I think if, if people want, uh, there are a lot of good articles that talk about this study and about cabotegravir, but if you want the press release from Vive itself, all you have to do is a simple Google search and Vive is spelled V-I-I-V, and just say Vive uh, Cabotegravir press release or Vive injectable HIV prevention or Vive prep press release and it'll come right up. Because what's happening now with the media, especially with COVID-19, is that you're getting a lot of filters um, mm-hmm. between opinions and politics and stuff like that going on with scientific data. And especially with COVID-19, it almost seems like there's a study coming out every day that hasn't really been peer reviewed or hasn't been filtered and people are jumping on it and then running with it. So I want people to read the actual press release from the pharmaceutical company because that gives the most detail and the most scientific detail that you need to find out what this is about. But again, I can't stress enough, this study had 50% black people in it, 50%. Um, so as it turns out, as Vive is showing us right now, that we aren't so hard to find or hard to reach as people mm-hmm. have said or uses the excuse with these clinical trials before. So in other words, people need to step up their game from these other pharmaceutical companies and vaccines. And instead of just being lazy and just putting 80 percent of white gay men in there, actually start to do the work to get people because people will enroll in these clinical trials and vaccines if you actually ask them and if you know where to look. Mm. Good. Thank you. Thank you so much again for joining us here with that. I appreciate everything that you let us know and everything that you're doing. So please be safe out there as well. I will. (laughs) And wash your hands as well as everybody else out there uh, for us. As we said earlier, make sure that you check out Johnny Cornegay's video, Prep in the Mail. Our other videos as well with David on Prep and everything that we've talked about here. Uh, Find us, like, subscribe, comment, everything Twitter at Building Desire, Facebook and Instagram at The Counter Narrative. Um, But as always, be good to yourself and join us next time.